What is going on YouTube? This is going to be my step-by-step -step guide on how to install macOS Sierra on a Windows-based PC, meaning you get to pick your own hardware. So let's go ahead and hop into it. A couple things that we are going to need is a USB drive. 3.0 will be faster or 2.0 will be acceptable. 16 gigabytes or higher. We're going to need an Apple-based computer or Hackintosh to download the software. An empty hard drive for storage. Um, compatible parts which are going to be in the description go ahead and take a look at them what we want to do is go ahead and plug your USB drive into the Apple computer or the Hackintosh we're going to load up the App Store and then we're going to go ahead and search for Mac OS Sierra and then go ahead and download it now this could take some time um, for the sake of time I did speed up a lot of this after it's downloaded go ahead and minimize that then we want to go to the search bar and type in disk utility. Once disk utility is up, go ahead and click on the external drive that you wish to save the software to. We're going to go ahead and then press erase. Now for the name, let's go ahead and title it USB. For the format, Mac OS Extended Journal. And for the scheme, you can leave it on um, GUID Partition Map. Go ahead and press erase. It'll take a few seconds to erase that thumb drive and format it correctly. After that's done, what we want to do is head over to Safari. And the link will be in the description, but it's the Tony Mac 86 website. Once we're here, we're going to go ahead and go over to Downloads. and we're going to search for unib7.0.1 now it's not going to let you download it just now so you, what you have to do is either create an account or log in if you already have an account and creating an account is free just registering just like any other website after you go ahead and do that go ahead and download the unib software now once installed go ahead and open it up If you get an error message saying that it's not compatible or if it's potential virus, just go ahead and continue. Now we're going to just follow through the prompts. Continue, continue, continue. Agree. Select the USB that we want to install the software to. We're going to pick the software, Sierra. Go ahead and click the correct boot mode. I'm going to go ahead and skip the graphics because I'm going to install drivers after. Now if you get that error message, it's normal. Um, what you want to do is go ahead and restart the computer and then go ahead and load UniBeast back up and try it again. Um, it happened to me on several computers. Some people don't have this issue, but if you do get that error message, go ahead and just restart the computer and go ahead and select all the same things as we did before and it should fix it. So go ahead and enter in your administrative password. Now this part can take anywhere from 20 minutes to up to an hour. Um, I had a USB 2.0 drive, 16 gigabytes, so it took me closer to the hour. But if you have a 3.0 drive, um, it would probably be much faster, maybe on the 20 to 25 minute side. But while it's doing this, do not touch anything. Let it go ahead and do the install. Don't let your computer fall asleep either, but don't, don't be multitasking. Um, I did this before and it messed it up and I had to do it all over again, so it was a kind of an hour wasted. But just to give you an idea of time frame I mean like I said this took me about 45 minutes so go ahead and do that install and just let it do its thing do not touch it don't let the computer fall asleep either because it may incur some problems alright after it's done you're gonna have just those two icons one other thing we want to go ahead and get from the Tony Mac website is um, multi beast now and this is going to be used for after the installation so go ahead and log back in and then go ahead and go over to the downloads tab and scroll down until we find the Sierra 9.0.1 multi beast and go ahead and download it Now once that's downloaded, what you want to do is just drag it over into the USB drive. Go 
I just copied everything that was in there just in case I needed it later. I ended up not needing it, but just gonna drag it all over. thing that we want to get before we go ahead and start the installation process is going to be the drivers for my graphics card um, so go ahead and over to the installation tab and we're going to scroll down um, until we find that link that brings us to the latest version of NVIDIA dra graphics drivers and it seems like every time I want to record any audio my dog wants to play Chloe go over there I'm busy so go ahead and click on the alternate drivers. And this is the latest version as of today. Go ahead and press download. And then agree and download. And then once it's downloaded, what you wanna do is just drag that file into the USB drive as well. We're not gonna need it just a second, but we'll need it after we install the MultiBeast. Um, Then we're gonna make sure that our USB drive is plugged into the PC that we want to install the software on. Go ahead and boot it up. And during the splash screen, you wanna hit your delete key several times, specifically for this motherboard. This is the Gigabyte motherboard, which I'll have linked in the description. And now bring us into the BIOS. Now for the BIOS, there's just a couple things that we need to check and check off. Um, first and foremost is go over to the save and exit tab and load optimized defaults. That's the first thing we want to do. And then next, we want to go over to the VT-D and disable it. Another thing we want to do is turn XMCI handoff and we want to enable it. Change the Windows 8 slash 10 feature to other OS. And the UEFI, which is a couple tabs down, um, change it to UEIF only. Another thing that I didn't show in the video, but you want to do is disable the Super IO configurator. And I put where it was located right there on the splash screen. And then you want to save and exit. Actually going to go back into the BIOS after the computer restarts, hit the delete key again. And what we want to do now is make sure that when the computer starts up, we're going to boot off of our USB drive. So go ahead and go into the BIOS folder. And for boot option number one, we're going to go ahead and find that drive. Um, what it's going to be called in this specific case is my SanDisk um, partition one. And then we're going to go ahead and save and exit. Now, if you have multiple drives, you also have multiple drives to choose from, but if you only have one hard drive and your USB drive, it'll pre be pretty simple to find. Now, you don't have to press any keys during this startup. It's going to automatically boot up into a, I guess, a selection mode. And what we want to do is go over to the center where it says install from USB or external, and it's a boot from USB. We're going to go ahead and click that. This part shouldn't take too long, um, depending on which type of hard drive you're installing it on. Um, but, you know, this part took me a few minutes. And once it's done, I'll go ahead and guide you on the next steps that we're going to be taking. Um, for whatever reason, if it freezes or crashes, um, that could either mean that you have downloaded the wrong software in macOS. That means that there may have been an update and the video that I'm showing you is for the specific software at the time. So if that's the case, make sure you check the proper UniBeast slash MultiBeast and make sure that it's for the correct software on the Tony Mac website. We're going to go ahead and um, use English as the main language because I'm American. And we're going to come over to the top and hit on Utilities. And we're going to go to Disk Utility. And we're going to find the hard drive that we want to install the software on, macOS Sierra. 
So I have two hard drives. One is for Windows 10, and this one is going to be specifically for Mac OS. And you don't want to delete your external hard drive because that's where all your software and everything you need on the USB. So it's, it's part of the internal, and it's one of the drives. If you have multiple, make sure you're selecting the right drive. Um, and what we want to call this drive is Sierra. And same thing as before for the format and for the scheme. Mac OS Extended Journal, and the scheme is GUID Partition Map. And then go ahead and press Erase. Depending on how much stuff you have, it could take a few minutes. And then we're going to go ahead and exit that out. And then we're going to finish the install process. So go ahead and continue, continue. And we're going to go ahead and agree. And then we're going to select the drive we want to install the software on. So like I said, Sierra. Um, this part says it takes about 13 to 12 minutes. It took me about 15 minutes. Um, once it's done, the computer is going to automatically restart. And it's going to bring us back to that bootloader screen. And we're almost done. We're about halfway there as far as installing the software. What we want to do now is go over to the tab that says HFS. And that's going to boot from the hard drive that we just actually created. And that's going to allow us to finish the install process. Um, before in the past you would have to enter in these commands. This specific software I was not, it was not necessary. Go ahead and do uh, your proper setup. Um, the Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi piece that I purchased allows my Wi-Fi and audio to work autom. I mean, my Wi-Fi and my Bluetooth to work automatically. Um, and then everything else is just your standard setup, as if you're setting up a Mac for the first time. So go ahead and create your profile, create your computer account, and so on and so forth. I always don't like to send the diagnostics to the developers because it's kind of unfair for them to properly work on it. Once it's turned on, you're going to go ahead and set up your keyboard and then you're going to open up MultiBeast from your USB drive. We're going to go ahead and go into the quick start. I'm going to do the UEFI boot mode. For audio specifically, this is my board, so I'm going to go ahead and select ALC1150 and 100 aud uh, series audio. Um, for my network to get my Ethernet working, which I don't need because I have Wi Fi, but I do it anyways. I'm going to go ahead and select this one right here. For bootloaders, go ahead and leave that alone for the selected one. Um, for customize, this should be automatic by default, but go under um, system definitions, iMac, and 14,2. Should be like that. And just make sure yours looks something similar like this. Again, this is if you have all of my parts, and we're going to go ahead and press install. After you install it, what you want to do is go ahead and close it down and you're going to go ahead and restart. After you restart, next option is going to be installing our graphics card um, software. So go ahead and open up from your USB drive that NVIDIA package and just go ahead and follow the prompts. I'm putting your administrative password in. Now after this is done, you're also going to have to restart. Now it's optional, or it could be depending on your hardware, that after you install this, your computer will be good to go and there's nothing further that you would need to install. Your drivers will be automatically working. Um, and I've done this install several times and sometimes my drivers stay working right after this step. However, if it doesn't work, I'm also going to show you how to fix that. What you need to do is after you restart it, if your graphics is good, you don't have to do anything, but if not, go back over to the Tony Mac website and, and search for EAF Mounter V3. And it should be one of the first ones that pop up. And again, you have to log in um, in order to download it, so make sure you log in or stay signed in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and download this package. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and open it up. And then you can close out of the Safari. And press OK. It's not trusted because it's not from a 
I guess, a well-known website, but it's fine. We're gonna go into the preferences and allow it anyways. Go ahead and pop in your passcode. Now you're gonna select um, S1. This is the disk that's installed. I have two options because like I said, I have Windows on the other hard drive. And we're gonna go ahead and open up the EIF, Clover, and we're gonna find the P list. What you wanna do is you're gonna right click, open with, and we're gonna go to other. We're gonna scroll all the way down to the text editor. Go ahead and click that. Um, don't be scared. All we're doing is just pretty much going down to the bottom. And we're looking for the option where it says false. And we're changing that to true. Just make sure yours looks exactly like that. We're going to go ahead and save. Hit exit out. Press OK. And then now we should be able to restart and your drivers from the video will actually stay. This is just a couple benchmarks um, after we did the actual performance tests. Um, 1943 on the multi-core and 4706. The read and write speed from the drives are pretty fast. And then one last drive, uh, one last test is the Nova Bench, which is a 1513. Pretty, pretty beastly. Um, Hackintosh is what I like to call it. And if you're pretty satisfied with the, the build, I mean, don't be scared. I have links down below for everything that I specifically purchased. And if you want to make the same exact computer as me, um, I will be able to give you guys more advice and anything that goes wrong, I can help you out with. So thanks for watching. Um, if you feel like you did a good job, please subscribe. I got plenty more videos to come. And if you have any questions, comment down below. And... If you have any friends that are thinking about building a Hackintosh, make sure they share.